Does this ever happen to you? After this video, you will never mess up on an edit again. Being on controller gives you a slight mechanical downside with an aiming upside. To make the most of being on controller, you need to figure out your binds the correct way. The default binds are very different from the way your binds should be. As you can see, for your edit bind, you would have to hold the button B or circle to edit. Holding any button gives you a disadvantage, but having to hold down on your button and then edit makes your edits and builds 10 times slower. Time is factored into everything you do in Fortnite. Even your amount of time to aim and shoot at an opponent is cut short. Let's say you're in a fight. You approach your opponent and end up having an opportunity to box him. At this point, you're ready to full piece him and you try and edit your wall to place a cone in his box, but you're too slow and he escapes. Once he evades your box, you're getting pieced by the one and only Justin. Right here, Justin, he's already taken and he's cracked at Fortnite, my guy. Whereas if you use the binds that pros like Day, Marrow, Scoped, and Face Sway use, then you could become a very mistake-proof and fast editor. The pros I just mentioned use either the left analog stick bind or the touchpad bind. These buttons are good because of the way they are utilized. When using the left stick bind, you don't have to take your fingers off of the analog stick. This is key to becoming a better and smoother controller player. For instance, when you're moving your right analog stick by using the default edit button, you have to take your thumb off the analog stick, causing you to pause your movement, while also having to hold the B or circle button for a second before being able to edit. Confusing, all right? This disrupts everything from the way you aim, to the way you edit, to the way you build, making every slight difference in winning a fight or not. Now, let's talk about the touchpad bind. This bind is mainly used on the PS4 or PS5 controller. Like the left stick button, the touchpad button is an instant response when pressed, which again, gives you a huge advantage over the other controller players using the B or circle button. Due to not having to hold the button down, there is no delay when you make an edit, helping you get that extra edge over the default layout controller players. Now, you may start to ask yourself, how is this supposed to help me if I have to take my thumb off of my left analog stick. Well, this brings us to our next topic of the video. But before we get into the next way to improve your editing, if you want to become an even better player, you can access all of our courses and bootcamp content for just $7.99. If personalized coaching is more your speed, you'll get 10% off any session with any of our pros. If you're watching this, you have probably already heard about the standard way to hold the controller. Thumbs on the joysticks, index fingers on the bumpers, middle fingers on the bumpers, leaving the ring and pinky fingers holding up the controller. But have you ever heard of the term claw? This way of playing controller is very efficient and logical. Instead of putting your right index finger on the bumper, try and hover it above the four buttons on the top right. If you're on PS4 or PS5 controller, those buttons would be square, triangle, circle, and X. If you're using an X Xbox One or Xbox Series X controller, those buttons would of course be X, Y, B, and A. You then would leave your middle finger responsible for the bumper and trigger. If you didn't want to do that, you could move your ring finger to the trigger and your middle finger to the bumper. Reminder though that this is only for your right hand. The reason this method of holding the controller is so good is because of your bind freedom. This means that you can click any button on the top right of your controller without having to worry about taking your thumb off the analog sticks, giving you a full range of motion along with no pauses in your action. If you wanted to change your edit bind to any of the four buttons on the right, you most definitely could because your right index finger will be hovering above them. Your index finger also gives you access to that touchpad button we talked about earlier. Although claw is a good way of holding your controller, it isn't for everyone, which is why we have another controller holding technique in store for you. This method of playing controller is very simple and easy to use. It's just gonna take some time and practice to get used to. The method I'm talking about is using buttons behind the controllers called paddles. Paddles are used as extra buttons on the back of your controller. You can get paddles on any controller using the Collective Mind Strike Pack. You can also get paddles on the Xbox Elite controllers. Almost 
any scuff controller has a paddle kit that comes with it also. The reason paddles are so good is because of the sole fact that you do not have to take your thumbs off the joysticks, which has been your goal since you've started playing with controller instead of keyboard and mouse. Being able to keep your thumbs on your joysticks gives you the ability to maximize your mechanical and aiming potential. This needs to be your main benchmark moving forward if you want to take advantage of every benefit that controller has to offer, including editing very efficiently and with speed. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get into the specifics. You can either use your ring finger or your pinky to press your paddle buttons. You can also set your paddle buttons to any bind on your controller. Let's say you set your right paddle button to left on your D-pad, and then the D-pad button would be a good choice for an edit bind. You wouldn't have to press it on the front of your controller. You can just press your right paddle button to execute the same action as you would if you pressed it regularly. Both of these methods are great for editing and just regular gaming, but you aren't magically just going to get good out of thin air the first time you swap the way you use the controller, meaning that you need to practice and experiment which binds work best for you and your playstyle. If you want the fastest editing speeds and mistake-proof techniques, then there's one more simple thing you can do to improve this. Now, this may be something you brush off or think that it won't help you improve, but editing courses are proven to better your editing skills and errors. Here are the key things to know while practicing on an edit course. Making it an efficient warm-up routine is crucial to becoming a fast editor and smoother controller player. First, you need to implement an editing course into your warm-up. If you already have an editing course, then just add it into the midst of your warm-up routine. Now, if you don't have an edit course, a good edit course is 7155. 57738759. This course is made strictly for controller players to practice on. The duration of playing on an edit course is completely up to you, but the time on it shouldn't continue any longer than 30 to 45 minutes. This is so we make sure you don't overwork yourself and get burnt out. Go through and learn the basics of the course. Then you can move on to the edits that mesh you up the most. Prioritize the faulty edits over the ones you're already capable of doing well. Focusing on the edits you fail on the most will allow you to make less mistakes and also learn how you can make your edits with quickness. Once again, this is not a speedy process. Becoming an efficient editor will take time, but it's totally worth it when you reach your end result. Whether it's winning a fight or when you're playing around with your friends and beating them for bragging rights. Once you have become a master at perfecting your edits, you then will move on to your accuracy and speed. The more precise your edits are, the better, especially with a rapid paced game like Fortnite. The faster you edit, the quicker your shots will come off, which may result in killing someone or getting yourself killed. Every split second you take to make an edit will make a huge impact on how you fight your opponents. So going into an edit course for a few minutes to keep your muscle memory intact will make a crazy and very noticeable difference. Okay, now it's time for a recap. Configure your binds. Minimize the times you have to take your fingers off of the controller, and this will make it easier to stay smooth and swift while you make your edits. Find the controller grip layout that's great for you and your playstyle. You can do this by trying both of the methods we mentioned today and seeing what works best. Practice, practice, practice. This is the most important but simple thing that you can do to make yourself a better editor, builder, and just all around player. Don't get discouraged. Everyone starts somewhere. Controller pros didn't instantly get good as soon as they started playing. Take your time and set your mind on improving. Keep your routine the same as it's always been. Continue going into an editing course as you've been in the past. This will help you master your craft more than you already have. Focus on perfecting inaccurate edits before dialing in on your speed. Capitalize on editing courses and work at the certain edits you make the most errors on. Once you become less prone to making mistakes, then you focus on the swift and precision of your edits. That just about wraps up the video for today. If you want to see more content on how to improve as a Fortnite player, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Also, make sure to stay tuned for more skill improving videos.